The situation here is this is a late season hunt. It's kind of a funny situation because the night before I had misread the weather and I thought it was going to blow at 19 miles an hour the next morning and then later on around midnight I checked and it was going to be a three mile an hour wind and it was going to be moving in this direction from the southwest. And so I thought, well, okay, I've stayed up this late. I think if I naturally wake up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I'll head out. If not, uh, I won't hunt. And I did wake up and got out of bed at 5. And after my scent preparation and everything, I made my way out down a lane right here to this giant oak tree. And from there, I'm able to watch an open grassy area here that's reed canary grass. And it is an area that deer cross. They're feeding over here on my neighbor's property. It's very lightly hunted. And they're coming over here to bed and typically the movement is in this direction in the mornings. I got into the stand about 7.30 in the morning which was right at uh, first light for shooting. Uh, I don't worry about getting to this area too early because movement really isn't going to happen until a half an hour to an hour after first light. It's a transition area. Deer are very comfortable continuing to feed there into the light and making their way across this field. So. I'm hoping there might be a doe fawn in heat. We get a lot of that in late December. This is the 23rd of December in Michigan. We have a lot of big fat doe fawns and we quite often see breeding parties late in December. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So I see my first deer about a half an hour after I get there. It's 8.02 a.m. They were fussing around there for five or six minutes and finally I moved the camera and spooked them and they went up circled around me and um, you know this happens about 16 minutes went by before they came around behind me you can see them running right here but I'm not too worried about that there's lots of activity here usually here's a buck going by at 8:24 a.m. and he was following another deer uh, here's a doe at 8.35 and then it was at 8.56 when I first saw the buck that I eventually decided I wanted to shoot. He's standing here looking around. Uh, I get the binoculars on him at this point and realize that yeah he's a shooter buck for me but at the same time he kind of caught me peeking at him. I'm about 60 yards away but he still did pick me up. Now several minutes have gone by here and he turned his head so I, I grabbed my gun very slowly but I still bumped the handle on the camera but he didn't pick that up. It sounded a lot louder than it really was because you're hearing it right on the camera. And he seemed to get relaxed but then he became really interested in my spot and he would be staring at me for several minutes now and I was frozen. I could not move a muscle. He stared and stared and stared. You can actually see the light changing as I uh, fast forwarded there, but now he decides to move. It's been 10 minutes and 30 seconds. And as I start to move to line up my shot, he picks me up again, he stops. But I know if I want to get this on camera, I have to reposition it to the area that he's most likely to move to if I'm going to get a shot. And I do that, and then it's another waiting period. In just a moment, you'll see that he's spooked. He comes running into the camera view. You will hear my muzzle loader hammer click back. Meh! Meh! I was able to catch that deer exactly where it ran and where it turned into my neighbor's woods. Now here's the shot in slow motion. And right here I'm freezing the frame because it was quite a wonderful moment where the smoke is coming out of the end of the barrel but the bullet and the sound have not gotten to the buck yet. And here goes the shot. He's hit. Double kick.
and he's off and running, but you'll see a distinctive bending to the right of the tail that indicates he's been hit. This turns out to be a little bit too far back. It's a liver, lung, and it's from about 90 yards away. Just didn't quite hit where I wanted to. Here's a little closer view of him, and now you can see that distinctive bend to his tail. He's hurting right here. Okay, that's where I was sitting. About 20, 25 minutes have gone by. Okay, I've got blood here. It looks pretty darn good, too. Good spraying blood right here. Couple of deer beds right here. Now right here, looks like he fell down. And then he goes this way. Right there's blood on that thick branch. Blood all through here. We're about 120 yards away now. Blood up high in all these spots. And he circled back towards my property. And died right here. That's a pretty nice Michigan buck right there. It can be a darn tough thing to get a buck like this in Michigan, especially in late season. He was very worn out, gored in several places. His skin was hanging loose on his bones. I'm guessing he lost 30 or 40 pounds during this really tough long rut. But it's not only tough on the deer, it's tough on the deer hunter. In southern Michigan where I live, about 65% of the bucks that are brought into check stations every year are like this little guy. Completely clueless, doesn't know where he is, he's just following the smell of a doe. Another 20% are like this almost as clueless guy, he's a two and a half year old who's posing here for a 60 yard muzzle loader shot. That leaves about 15% of check station bucks being three and a half and older. But check stations are overrepresented by bigger and older bucks. So my best guess is about one out of 10 of the bucks in southern Michigan are three and a half or older. So we really have to work hard at getting these three and a half and older deer. And we do work hard during the season, but most of our work is occurring in the winter, the summer, and the fall when we're changing our habitat, we're creating bedding areas, we're opening up the canopy of our woods to let light in to make it more dense. We're planting food plots to attract deer to our properties. We're trying to create a habitat that the deer will use in daytime and we will be able to ambush them. You can learn more about how to improve the habitat on your own property by clicking the link below.